Okay, I just want to uh, briefly go through some of the modifications uh, in the bird eye, uh, just because it seems the most relevant to continue from the vascular tunics. Um, so again, starting at low magnification, this is a duck, uh, perhaps the most obvious uh, pigmented modification, although it does arise from the optic nerve head. Uh, you can think of it histologically as being similar to choroid, is the pectinoculi, which is this sort of uh, uh, lamellar uh, uh, vascular structure that sticks out from the optic nerve, which remember is the blind spot, so you can have stuff sticking out there without a huge impact on vision, although you might imagine it might interfere with some of uh, some of the immediate uh, adjacent retina, but most birds seem to do okay with it. Um, and this replaces uh, the vasculature of the retina from a functional standpoint. Uh, bird retinas and any non-mammalian vertebrate uh, does not have um, blood vessels in its inner retina, so they need a, a modification to get the nutrients and oxygen uh, to the cells of the inner retina. Uh, all species relevant to your education get uh, nutrition to their outer retina, as stated from the choriocapillaris, birds are no different. Um, and this structure will sort of oscillate and help to circulate things around. So we'll just look at that at a little higher magnification. And we can see that it is very similar to choroid. Pigmented melanocytes, lots of blood vessels. Uh, remember, which we I don't think we stated specifically, hopefully it's been covered, that uh, birds and again non-mammalian vertebrates have nucleated red blood cells. Um, don't let that throw you. Um, and we didn't get to it in the notes, but you'll, you can see that this can be affected in some of the posterior uveitides of birds, such as West Nile virus. Um, and then interesting modifications in the anterior uvea are ciliary processes that insert or abut directly on the lens at the equator. There are still lens annuals, um, which we'll uh, run through real quick, which I didn't talk about uh, in the cat or the dog. They still have lens annuals, but as far as accommodation goes, they can actually push directly on the lens and physically make it more round. Um, and you can see this little cap-like modification of the equatorial lens in the bird, which is called the annular pad, um, and this is thought to facilitate uh, the compression and changing of shape, which is involved in mod uh, excuse me accommodation. Um, and this is in the lens, so lens capsule is out here, and this is actually a modification of the lens itself. Um, we didn't, don't think anybody got a great opportunity to see this in lab. We'll see if it can show up in this magnification. Um, but these are uh, skeletal muscle fibers of the ciliary body in the bird. Oh, zoomed out a little too much. Um, and here we can see that they're inserting uh, on the peripheral uh, the inner sclera right near the limbus, so these are the, the fibers that would serve to bend the cornea and increase accommodation. For example, if this bird is out of the water and needs a little bit more accommodation or refraction, sorry, uh, if it needs a little more refraction from its cornea, uh, it'll contract these fibers and put a little bend to increase the angle of curvature. Um, and skeletal muscle is also the story in the iris, uh, though it may not highlight too well. Um, birds have a voluntary uh, um, uh, iris sphincter muscle which can interfere with clinical evaluation. Um, and while we're at it, um, we'll just jump to the cat and remind everyone that the normal lens equator is sort of where all the action is, so the lens is surrounded by the lens capsule, which is again is a basement membrane, it looks very similar to Decimase membrane, secreted by lens epithelial cells, which normally are just along the front. And as we move towards the equator, you can see that the cells make basically a 180 degree turn as the fibers, which are the lens cells, elongate and compress towards the center. Um, also at the lens bow uh, here. It's also the equator of the lens where the capsule thickness gets abruptly thinner and the posterior capsule is very thin and normally has no cells associated with it. Um, and remember that the growth of the lens 
compacting of fibers towards the center is the reason that old animals, regardless of species, uh, even humans, uh, get nuclear sclerosis, which means hardening of the nucleus, um, which again is just a normal consequence of aging. So that's uh, some of the key modifications of the bird. Uh, I'll show you the owl. We can't zoom in very close on this, but just a low power highlight that it, this is the tubular lens, excuse me, tubular eye, where what would normally be the round extensions out here have just been trimmed off to save space in the skull. We've still got scleral ossicles, basophilic band of scleral cartilage, which facilitates the maintenance of this shape. Um, we can see this owl's pectin. Uh, we can make out the annular pad. Uh, we can see that his iris leaflets are a little bit wimpy. Um, he wants to get lots of light in here. Um, and his uh, ciliary processes, again, are abutted. Uh, they're not very robust, but they're abutted right up against the annular pad here for accommodation. That concludes this tour. We'll finish up with the retina, uh, and then that will be pretty much it for the normal tour.